Welcome to TV 20 News, I'm Dan Monroe. A major step forward in Cleveland's vision for a more connected and accessible lakefront was made. A new 2.7 mile trail that will stretch from East 9th to East 55th Street is a result of a partnership between Cuyahoga County, Cleveland Metro Parks, and the City of Cleveland. We have been working very hard, very hard to make our lakefront not just a downtown asset, not just a west side asset, but a all of Cleveland asset. The Cleveland Metro Park has worked tirelessly to expand the park through trail connections. And this important addition to our network is made possible through the power of partnerships. And I think you can hear that word again and again, because the lakefront development is all partnerships. These trails are really commuter sheds right now for people who don't own vehicles who need to get to and from their places of employment. So one thing I think that COVID taught us is that everybody wants to be outside. We have to make connections that are safe for people, that they know how to connect to the next segment. And this is a very important segment. With this new trail together, we are strengthening our neighborhoods, connecting people to each other at Lake Erie, and enhancing the quality of life. Planners have long known that trails and green space are a vital part of our transportation infrastructure. They make communities more livable, more desirable, strengthen the economy, and improve public health. Today's groundbreaking is a symbol of what grounding city planning and the lived experience of our residents is all about. Once completed, this new trail will connect communities, provide stunning views of Lake Erie, and offer a new space for Clevelanders to walk, bike, and enjoy the outdoors. Some local youth hit the streets this summer as a force of good, cleaning up and beautifying their Ward 4 neighborhoods. All of this is thanks to a program created last year by Ward 4 Councilwoman Deborah Gray. Prior to joining City Council, Deborah Gray noticed a lack of opportunity for some teens in her community during the summer. When I uh, campaigned for the council, a lot of the youth in Ward 4 uh, asked me about them obtaining a job. You know, they had not anything to do. Uh, at their age, they can never get a real job. And, you know, and they would like to make some money because their parents wasn't able to be there for them all the time, per se. And that's a positive thing because they was able to speak up. Councilwoman Gray came up with the Summer Youth Beautification Project, but it was nonprofit community development corporation Burton Bell Carr that made it a reality. So the name of this program is the, Summer Beautific the Youth Summer Beautification Project. And basically, is what they do is they go out and they clean up various areas in Ward 4 because it's Councilwoman Gray's program. And it's, a job, it's an opportunity for get work experience and also to meet, we have what we call Career Exposure Day, to meet with different employers and learn about different um, job opportunities out there and what it takes to be an employer, employee of that company. The teens are doing more than receiving a paycheck for their work in the neighborhood. They are also getting valuable job life skills, like learning how to write a resume and interviewing for jobs. Uh, my mom saw it in the newspaper and she thought it was a good idea for me. And I've wanted to like get out the house a lot more during the summer. So yeah, it's helped me out a lot. We cleaned up the city, we found different streets, and actually we went on my street sometimes. You know, just, just making sure the community is nice for people coming by. We have worked on like, how we like this job and like we would go on the streets and like clean the trash up, pick up the trash with the grabbers and uh, people would just drive by and be like, sir, we did a good job. The job skills I've learned from it's like communication, um, being more confident and um, just being open more. I wanted to like get some money this summer and I had nothing to do and I thought I could learn some stuff while I was here. Mostly like like learn how to make a resume, go to the library, learn stuff there, and overall just doing work. What job skills have you learned from being in this program? Mostly teamwork and dedication. The importance of this program for the youth is for them to show that, that we as adults are supportive to them, for them to have some place to go to know that they are, uh, you know, to know that whatever they able 
to do for themselves, we're here to give back. So not only for the importance for them, it was important for me to know what I was able to do for them. Space fills up quickly for Councilwoman Gray's program, and interested teens should reach out to Burton Bell Carr to get on the list. Even if you don't get selected for the beautification program, there are still other opportunities, says the Development Company's Youth Program Coordinator, Andrea Catlin. Now with Councilwoman Gray's program, we actually select 10 youth. So we advise you know, youth to make sure they contact us as soon as possible to fill those spots. And then if the slots are full, we, we do have other opportunities through Burton Bell Carr that we can connect them with. Um, such as Youth, um, youth um, Opportunities Unlimited. So they, it is other opportunities if they're not able to, um, if those slots are fulfilled, are filled, but however, they will be put on a wait list as well. For more information on signing up your teen for next summer's Youth Beautification Project, visit the Burton Bell Car Development website at bbcdevelopment.org or call them at 216-341-1455. The story of the teens and Councilwoman Gray's Summer Youth Beautification Program isn't over yet. Summer has officially ended and the teens were honored for their hard work at a special graduation ceremony. In her address at the graduation ceremony, Ward 4 Councilwoman Deborah Gray expressed how proud she was of the teens for all the hard work they did in the community this summer. So I just want to say I'm just so proud and happy and humble uh, of these young men and women who stayed in this program for 10 weeks, I mean for 12 weeks, because you guys stuck it out. It is not common for someone want to get up every day to go out and clean up the community. And I can't imagine what y'all picked up, okay? <laughs> but uh, listen, so I'm so appreciative of y'all standing in this program, staying in this program, and doing what y'all have done. In gratitude for their hard work this summer, each of the teens were presented with a Certificate of Appreciation from the Cleveland City Council. This was truly an amazing experience for the teens, and thanks to Councilwoman Deborah Gray, Ward 4 reaped all the benefits of their hard work. It's a summer celebration that brings people from all over the Cleveland's Little Italy neighborhood, and it all revolves around a holy religious event. It's called the Feast of the Assumption, and Holy Rosary Church has been celebrating the feast since 1899, 125 years. The feast centers on the Catholic belief of the day Jesus' mother Mary ascended into heaven. The feast kicks off with the Mass of the Church, and afterwards, a statue of the Virgin Mother is processed through the streets of Little Italy. Some people came to the feast for the first time, others have been coming since they were kids, and still others, who may live farther away, come back because they still feel the pull of their old neighborhood on their hearts. For Mary Jane Tomaselli, Holy Rosary Church and Little Italy has been a big part of her life. Well, I was born here and uh, baptized at this church. Um, I was married here. Uh, my kids were all baptized here. Um, my husband was buried here in his mass. Um, we've lived in the neighborhood all, all these years. Um, I still have my dad's house down here. And the feast is a feast. It's, you just come and you don't miss it. Tomaselli also said that it's the deep-rooted traditions that make the Feast of the Assumption so alluring. There's a lot of tradition, a lot of family. Everyone is family right now, um, and you run into all these people that you haven't seen in years or you've seen yesterday. But it's just such a wonderful feeling to be together, uh, especially on the Feast of the Assumption. And um, we, we have our traditional foods, we have our traditional drinks, um, we do our traditional customs, and um, we all have a great time. And everybody was having a great time, thanks to the music and the unbelievable selection of delicious Italian foods. Jimmy, Joey, Juliana, and Gianna Tamaro said they love coming down with their family. Uh, it's kind of fun coming down with my family, spending time, lighting candles, praying. The Feast of the Assumption, now in its incredible 125th year, has something for everyone. Whether you are reconnecting with your faith, reconnecting with an old friend, 
or reconnecting with some cannolis from Corbo's Bakery, Little Italy during this time, or any time for that matter, is a sight to behold. For more information on Holy Rosary Church or the Feast of the Assumption, visit Holy Rosary's website at holy-rosary.org. The West Bank of the Flats recently served up something special as some of the top women's tennis players from around the globe competed in Tennis in the Land tournament, powered by Rocket Mortgage. Errol Porter was at the Nautica Entertainment Complex where the action took place. Thanks, Dan. We're so excited. What a way to end the summer. Some of the best professional tennis players in the world have converged right here in downtown Cleveland for Tennis in the Land. Tennis in the Land is more than just a tournament. It's an experience for both players and fans. This WTA 250 event has transformed the Nautica Entertainment Complex into an intimate 2,000 person venue where tennis fans can get closer to the action than ever before. It was important for us to be downtown. Uh, we could have gone to the suburbs and, and whatnot, but to have the full Cleveland experience for the players, for the fans, et cetera, for the sponsors, uh, it was very important for us to be down here and all uh, roads led to Nautica. With every swing, serve, and volley, spectators were just a few rows away from some of the best in the game. Players from all over the world came to Cleveland, bringing their A-game to this one-of-a-kind event. Yeah, I would just try my best and uh, try to improve my, my game. And obviously the goal is to prepare the best for New York next week. So yes, I will try to, to do everything possible. And just take it match by match. Everyone's really, really good. So um, just see if I can do the best I can that day and come out on top is the goal. For the fans, this setup means a chance to see the sport in a way that's usually reserved for the VIPs at bigger tournaments. And with Rocket Mortgage powering the event, it's all about bringing the sport to the community and making world-class tennis accessible right here in Cleveland. This is incredible. I wouldn't miss it. Uh, we have a friend uh, that used to play in the tennis ladder, Alex Guthrie, and he helps organize this and he runs the tournament. And uh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. What a great opportunity to see these, these kids play and these, these great athletes. It's the movement. Their incredible technique and form, it's just incredible. You can't appreciate it on TV. you got to come down and watch it live. you got to come down here. So we have a couple players top 30 in the world, um, but then the rest of the field really are top 100 in the world, and all of them are going to head to New York next week for the U.S. Open. So really for them, this is a good preparation, uh, not only to earn a little money on the way, but also just get ready for the U.S. Open next week. If you love tennis, this was the place to be. Downtown Cleveland on the banks of the Cuyahoga River. What a great setting. I'm Errol Porter reporting for TV20. We are Cleveland. Restoration Day, a key holiday in the Dominican Republic, found a new home in Cleveland on August 16th. The city's Dominican community gathered at City Hall for a special commemoration. TV20's Alex Victorna brings us a story. The city of Cleveland took part in commemorating Restoration Day, a significant holiday marking the Dominican Republic's return to sovereignty from Spanish rule. The local celebration kicked off with a historic moment as the Dominican flag was raised for the first time above Cleveland City Hall. It's very exciting, very exciting. It, it brings us out, you know, for being uh, citizens of Cleveland for a few years, now being this our second home, it brings us a lot of pride uh, to see the, our flag on top of City Hall. Cleveland City Hall's rotunda came alive with Dominican culture after the flag raising. The event featured a vibrant mix of traditional food, music, and cultural performances, transforming the civic space into a showcase of Dominican heritage. They're such beautiful people. Their heart and their soul, it's wonderful. And they're very religious people. They have great faith. So yeah. I've been very fortunate to serve our Hispanic community, and in particular, to Dominicans. For TV20, this is Alex Picturna. Dominican music and the aroma of traditional food mark the start of this year's Dominican festival celebration in Cleveland. Here's TV20's Alex Picturna with more. Mayor Justin Bibb opened the event with a welcome address, emphasizing the importance of community-driven gatherings. This community is a true symbol of the great diversity of our great city. So congratulations, let's eat some good food, let's dance, and have a good time. God bless, I appreciate you. The event's organizers, the Dominican Club of Cleveland, stress that while the celebration highlights Dominican culture, it is open and welcoming to all community members. All the ethnicities that are coming to Cleveland, especially Dominican, but non-Dominicans too. For people looking for jobs, housing, schools, 
and what to do here. We are happy to receive everyone and to be part of this. For TV20, this is Alex Picturna. Thanks, Alex. The air was filled with good music thanks to young people and their performance of Show Wagon. The Show Wagon, a cherished Cleveland tradition, wrapped up its annual summer tour at Camp Forbes. This year's theme, Journey into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, featured young performers bringing classic hits like Hit the Road Jack, This is a Man's World, and Ain't No Mountain High Enough to Life for an enthusiastic audience. For generations, the traveling stage has provided a platform for Cleveland's youth to showcase their talents in singing, dancing, and performing. The show wagon continues to be a celebration of the city's cultural heritage and emerging artists. You can feel it all over people. For TV20, this is Alex Picturna. For any Cleveland youth ages 8 to 14 interested in signing up for next year's show wagon, you can call 216-664-2562. It was a celebration of community, culture, and nostalgia. The Fairfax neighborhood came alive with the 14th annual Fairfax Old School Reunion and Picnic, hosted by the Cleveland Department of Community Relations. Residents gathered at the heart of the Fairfax neighborhood, rekindling old friendships and making new memories. The annual event has become a staple in the community, bringing together generations to celebrate the rich history of Fairfax. We get together every year, of course for 14 years, we get the community together and we just come out and support the neighborhood. We all born and raised over here, so this is what we do. I grew up on 83rd, right, so we love our community. My dad grew up across the street, raised me and my brothers by himself. So we know what it is to pull together, right? To support the community, to come out, food, have fun, dance. We got book bag drives. So the, the better we work together as a community, the better we all do as a, as a collective. So I'm all about the community and supporting everybody and, you know, being better for our city. Events like this bring our community together. It's a testament to the strong bonds and traditions that make Cleveland's neighborhoods so special. Well, you know what? It's always good to have things for the unity of the community, you know, and, and as long as we stay active in community, we can keep everything going and peaceful, people know each other and things like that. The sounds of laughter and music continued to fill the air with many residents already looking forward to next year's reunion. The Fairfax Old School Reunion and Picnic was more than just a gathering. It was a celebration of community, history, and the enduring spirit of Fairfax. The Recreation Center really is the pulse of a neighborhood. So by us being able to use this facility, work with the Recreation Center, and they collab with us to put this event on every year, it, it, it's what we all got to do. And it just, you see the turnout, we do it every year, and we just build on it and get better and better every year. So kudos to the Recreation Center staff, the city of Cleveland. We doing big things. We are constantly uploading our new content on our TV20 Cleveland YouTube page. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. You can also connect with TV20 Cleveland on your favorite social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X. Thanks for watching TV20 News. I'm Dan Monroe. Be sure to stay tuned for more on TV20. We are Cleveland.